Last episode, we achieved 3037 score from almost exclusively pugging, and today we continue our journey onwards to 3.1 and potentially even further, going over all the highs and lows. So, to kick things off, we started with a 23 Brackenhide Hollow on a Tyrannical Week. We were playing with a Misweaver, and I don't know if I want to blame it purely down to that, but they seem to be struggling with the Gash Frenzies on the first boss. With this first boss, I'll normally pop Survival of the Fittest on the first Gash Frenzy and then the healer can top me up from there. And the later Gash Frenzies, I'll use Turtle when things are a bit more panicky or the healer has less mana. So that's what happened in this key. I seem to remember that the healer was struggling a little bit with topping us for the Gash Frenzy, but nobody died so it was a W. After clearing the forest and Tree Mouth, we then moved on to Stink Breath. We do have two potential candidates in me and the Rogue that can skip Stink Breath in this group comp, but it's kind of sketchy to do those kind of skips with a Pug group. So we do just take him by himself. It is a bit of a time waste, but it's not the end of the world. Then we move on to Gut Shot, which we do the regular pull the bear and the two vultures onto the boss. Unfortunately, this time though, they did heal the boss up with Sanguine. You have to be really careful on Sanguine Weeks with pulling mobs onto the bosses, just because a lot of the bosses this season do like to stand there and cast. And so they pretty much get healed to full every single time. So it's not always worth it. And then we move on to the last boss, which I'm sure we're all aware by this point, but this boss is the bane of the key. This is what really matters. As long as you can take out the totems, then the rest of the key is relatively free. But the subtlety rogue was pumping throughout this entire key, so I was going into this fight pretty confident. I thought he was deleting them, but it turns out I did more overall damage to the end. Maybe he was deleting every other one. I'm not too sure. But we do get the last boss down and we get a big 14 score out of this. So now we're sat at 3051. Next, we move on to a freehold 24 where we actually ninja pulled a pack at the start. I honestly have no idea how we ninja pulled this. I went over the VOD and I literally cannot see how we pulled this. I got blamed for my pets, but I was on my mount. For any of you guys that don't know out there, if you're on a mount as a hunter, the pets actually become like technically invisible, so they can't ninja pull for you. But because of this ninja pull, I didn't expect an enforcer to be in here and I actually ended up dying to the shattering bellow. I was already down to 40% when it went off, so I didn't really have a chance here. I definitely could have popped a defensive, but I wasn't really ready for it. But we just run back up. It's a little bit of a time loss, but it's no biggie. After the first boss, I had to do the skip on the Enforcer on the bridge. Here, I have to dismiss my pets first, shoot the Enforcer, run up the bridge where the rest of the guys are. They'll jump over the fence and run across the bridge. Then after that, I disengage over and then feign death when I'm about halfway down the bridge. And then we can continue on. This also really hurt my overall, so I lose the overall DPS at the end. But that's neither here nor there. Then we do a pretty chatted out pull. We pull two crushes onto the turtle mini boss. Now this should be a melee problem, but it actually ends up taking out me first and then the evoker after. Don't really know what we were doing here. I think we just lost a bit of concentration and fell over to the turtle shells, but I definitely learned my lesson here. After killing Trothak, we ran across the bridge to the last platform here. We were going to skip, but then we realized we couldn't get past these first two mobs, so we quickly took them out. Then again, it was Sanguine this week, and we pulled the last pack onto the last boss. Unfortunately, this healed him up to full multiple times. It's not even really a skill issue at this point. You just have to be so lucky with the Harlan's timing of his casts. But yeah, unfortunately, there was a few times where Harlan healed up to full here from only about 90%, but that does add up. Fortunately, we had so much time left on the key that we did end up timing this one. I played like a bit of a bot on this last fight. If you miss one freezing trap as a hunter here, you're kind of desynced for all the adds. So I had to do a bit of kiting here and also called for Seb's landslide at one point. But we do time this with about 20 seconds to go and we only get three score out of this. So that's a feels bad man, but score gains are score gains at the end of the day. And then after that, we moved on to some big boy keys. Here we've got an Underrot 25, which is going to be the easiest 25 that you could time this season. So this was a bit of a warm up in preparation for some more 25s that we've got in this video. But this is where I really started to feel the key level on this first boss. Not really a scary boss, but it just took forever to kill. Then we moved into the Cragmore Arena and here we did some massive pulls. We actually had a pretty good group going at this point and you'll see that we keep this group for a few more keys. But the coordination of the CC seemed to be really on point and that allowed us to do these big pulls in this area, pulling a lot of lashes that were casting decaying mines. We had blood swarmers that we needed to CC, all of the usual. But because we pulled so many mobs, all of my nameplates flew up to the ceiling. So I had to kind of pan my camera down and I didn't realize that there was a swirly underneath me at this point. I pan my camera back down to the floor, but unfortunately it is too late at this point. I guess the swirly had already been there for a second or two, and then I die to the burst of decay or whatever it's called from the oozes. Ran back down and the priest died to the exact same thing. I don't know if it was a nameplate issue, but he did stand in the ooze, decay, whatever you want to call it, the puddle 
So yeah, then we moved on to Cragmore. We were super clean on the ticks here. It wasn't really a problem at all. We just had maybe five or six tantrums. So it was a long fight, a lot of damage going out. But we managed it. Almost a three and a half minute fight here. So yeah, this was a long one. After that, we went to Zancha on the first or maybe it was the second festering harvest. I realized that there were still a few mushrooms left up and by a few, I mean five or six. I popped my turtle and ran through them. Somehow I missed one of them, although I'm pretty sure I clipped onto it. Not sure how that happened, so I popped another defensive and then went and ate that by myself, so all of us didn't get the debuff. Honestly, my heart dropped at this point. I thought I was about to wipe the group by missing that last mushroom. And then we get onto the last pack of the dungeon, which is my least favorite place to be in this dungeon in particular. I hate this pool with a passion. You've got the maddening gazes that go out and you can barely see which direction they're facing. All of the tentacles that are coming out while kicking the void spits and also the dark echoes. I didn't kick the worm here probably because I was so focused on dodging everything and living everything. So a void spit went through and took me out. Unfortunate, but at least I didn't die to one of the maddening gazes because that would have tilted me. And then we take out the last boss with about two minutes left. So on a 25, that's pretty decent. It wasn't the cleanest key. There were some few stupid deaths, particularly from my side. But regardless, we time it and get 18 score out of that one so we're now sat at 3075 score pretty close to our 3.1 gold so like i mentioned we were really having a good time with this group so we took them then into a 25 halls of infusion i can't remember whose key this was but following on from the stupid deaths we did a massive pull at the start and i already had my disengage on cooldown for the containment beam because the containment beam is technically a movement impairing effect, you can use abilities like disengage freedom to drop them from you so you're not taking the massive damage that they deal. I did have my cheater up here, but I think my fingers were all in a twist. So I tried to walk out of this, but I was already slowed by the beam and then I just die to the puddle. I can't remember what it's called. It's just the geomancers leaping out. Not the end of the world, just a blow to my ego because I lost to the shadow priest. But to be fair, he was absolutely blasting on this first pack. So can't really argue with that. Going around the first arena, which is terrifying, even on a tyrannical week. These mobs deal so much damage and there's so many kicks here as well. A lot of the kicks are going to reduce your damage. A lot of the kicks are going to wipe your group. For example, the expulses. But the tank was pulling like a madman and the group was dealing with it just fine. On the first boss, a little tip for you guys if you don't already know. You can have a priest master spell. It doesn't actually deal any more damage if you have two puddles overlapping. So you just drop them in the same place, takes up less area, and then you can all move out safely. Then the boss is almost dead here. I've got my exil up, but I decided to pop a turtle here, which actually ends up saving me because Seb rescues me, which fair enough, it grants us both under 30% absorb shield. So that's huge and probably going to save us. But somehow it turns my POV of my camera. So when I disengage, it sends me back into the middle of the power overload. Luckily, I had my turtle up, so I wasn't taking any damage from it. But yeah, I just thought that was interesting to note that the rescue actually changed my POV, even though it didn't actually change my camera. So I thought I was safe to disengage out, but it turns out I just went back into the midst of all the lightning. Hog champ. Moving on after the first boss then, we continue with the trash. And if you guys are familiar with this dungeon, then I'm sure you're also familiar with the dragonflies bugging out and going under the floor and evading for the rest of the dungeon. That happens to us here in our first 25 of this dungeon and it stings us later on, you'll see why. Another scary pack, even on a tyrannical week, we got these mobs that cast the elemental focus. One of them did go off here, we probably overlapped some kicks somewhere, but I had my finger on the trigger with my purge or tranquilizing shot, so instantly removed it so it didn't wipe us. Then we move on to the frog boss, and this is the first time I've actually seen this strat, but my god, it was a Pogchamp strat. Basically, we had two markers on either side of the room, and then every time the boss spawned the mini frogs, we would run to the other side of the room. Then we'd use some slowing CC to make sure that the smallies actually got gulped by the boss. Just a really clean and effective way to make sure you get all of the smallies every single time. This was at the point in the season where you could still mine soup skip, so that's what we do here. And then we move on to Kajin, which is a terrifying boss, especially on a 25 Tyrannical. And this is where the dragonfly that bugged earlier starts to sting us. We had to go into this boss with a healer on about 60% mana, I think he started with, because he was in combat the whole dungeon since the dragonfly. He's not fully empty on mana, to be fair, but maybe he was playing a bit more conservative. So at some point in the fight, I had to pop like three defensives back to back, and it got very scary. But towards the end of the fight, it started to pick up again, and then we took her out with no problem. Because of this dragonfly bugging, the healer could still not get any mana, obviously. So we made the executive decision to get him killed and then res him so that he was no longer in combat. And somehow it actually worked. I thought because we were still in combat, it might put him back into combat. But it was fine, and he drunk up to full. We had three phases on the last boss, obviously a very long boss on Tyrannical. And the final burden of that dragonfly bugging through the floor is you might see that we're a little bit low on percent. 
So we take out the last boss with one minute to go. We TP back up to the start. And th at this point, I am tilted off the face of the planet. I'm like, there is no way this Dragonfly has just stopped me timing my best key this season. I mean, a Halls of Infusion 25 Tyrannical is a pretty impressive key in my books. But we do manage to run into the first arena. With 30 seconds left, we take out this last Ravager and we do end up timing the key just about. Talk about Blizzard trying to give me a bloody heart attack. And for that, we get a massive 28 score out of this. So now we're sat at 3103 and we finally broke 3.1k. You can see how happy I am in the bottom left. So massive score gains from that one. And it was a really nice key. I was really, really happy that we actually timed that key because Halls of Infusion is definitely my least favorite dungeon this season. Now we're going to jump into some off stream keys. We started with a 26 freehold and we actually shrouded past the first couple of mobs at the start. This just makes it so you have to deal with less enforcers over the course of the key, which are the scary mobs in this dungeon. And this is exactly why you can see that Seb gets taken out here by one of the Shattering Bellows. Just unfortunate because he had all of his defensives already on cooldown. And as you can see, he has his cheat death proc'd already. So he falls over to that. He can't release because we shrouded at the start. And then we go back and do a big pull at the very beginning. The tank unfortunately falls straight over to two Saber Rattles. I don't know if the tank could have popped a bigger defensive going in, but I don't think you're really expecting to get one shot on a tyrannical key. I'm sure they had something like Bark Skin already active. But yeah, maybe the mobs just synced up from where she ran in at maybe an awkward time. Honestly, I have no idea here. But yeah, I have seen this happen quite a lot on bears. Run it back on the 25 then. We just decided to go with a standard route here. We go on to the first boss. Pistol shots are pretty much one-shotting you at this key level. So as soon as you get hit by one, you need to pop a defensive, whether it's an instant heal or maybe a max health increase. That's what I do because if you do receive a pistol shot back to back, then you're just going to get taken out and then you're going to have to burn a combat res. As soon as you phase the boss though, at 75%, the fight becomes a lot easier. On the BM Hunter, I do tend to try and bait the parrot poops. I just have to be the closest one to it after the dive bombs. But again, at this level of key, the poops actually start to really hurt. So I try and use a movement ability to actually escape the poop before it hits the floor. We were using freedoms, disengages and aspects of the cheater but definitely some were still hitting me and believe me, they hurt. I do definitely think that we could have cleaned up our route a bit in this key. I'm not convinced that we need lust for Council of Captains. I think people might just be in the habit of it from back in BFA. It's not a high damage output fight. You have the single target damage going out from the pistol shots, but that is about it. Because instead what we did is we cleared to the booty arena, but then we had to run back on ourselves for when Lust was up to then take out the Council of Captains. And then we have to run back to the Ring of Booty arena. So there's a lot of downtime there. But yeah, we do end up taking the second boss out of Lust. Then we move on to Trothak. As a BM Hunter, I'm generally the one that's going to be baiting the sharks into the puddles. The Augmentation Evoker is quite good at this as well, but obviously BM has no negative feedback from doing this. But my god, if they do catch you, they do actually slap. So you got to be on your toes with these ones. Again, another sanguine issue. We did heal the boss to full multiple times in this run. You really just can't stop Harlan. He has so many casts where he just cannot be moved and then he just heals up. So he lost quite a bit of time there and it might have cost us the key if it wasn't already bricked from the root. I was much more on it with my freezing traps this time. There is one every so often that you have to use a binding shot for because your trap doesn't come back up in time. And then, yeah, unfortunately, we do overtime the key by about 30 seconds. I think we could have just cleaned up the route and then maybe cleaned up some of the bosses as well and we would have been golden. Because as you can see, we only had one death, so it wasn't a super scuffed key. We were just very tight for time. After this, Older Man 24. On Bromac, me and the mage were actually standing on this tent. This means that the melee trogs that the boss spawns don't actually leap to you and deal massive damage to us. It was pretty rough, especially for the mage here though, because we had Volcanic, it was spawning under us quite frequently and we were so close that we were messing with each other. That didn't stop us from taking out Bromac quite smoothly and also the Lost Dwarves after. Then we get onto everybody's favorite tyrannical boss in Older Man and it's Talondrus. On this key level, on a Tyrannical, Crushing Stomp is doing about 80% of our health every time to all of us, unless we dodge it. And the healer does get taken out by the Earthen Shard here, unfortunately. We have many ways to stop it in this key. We have a Bleed Dispel, we have Bops. I don't know, can Holy Paladin's talent into two Bops? I'm not actually sure on that one. Let me know down in the comments. I think the problem with this boss that I'm seeing a lot is that I'm overlapping my defensive cooldowns with a Bleed Dispel or a Blessing of Protection. I think on a healer's priority list, I'm probably quite high up there because of the stigma attached to hunters that I am very squishy. But I should be fine if I pop a defensive. I just maybe need to be a bit more wary whether I'm popping it or not. Maybe leave it for a tick or two. 
But I don't know if I want to blame myself because at this key level, Earthen Shard is hitting so hard. So do I really want to chance it and take a few ticks before I actually press my defensive just in case we do overlap some defensive utility? But after that, we had a couple of deaths here and there. And then we go into the Runic Protector's room. I think there was a mob in the back that we were trying to LOS. So I guess the healer just got unlucky with the timing on the cleave and he actually gets taken out by that. And then the rest of us follow suit, so we end up running this back on a 23. Again, we had deaths to the Earthen Shard and the Crushing Storm, but it is a nasty overlap. But yeah, I think we were just having a rough day with this boss, so all of us end up taking out at the end because the healer was down. On Ember on the Mage decides to go for a wonder into one of the Fire Swirlies. I mean, maybe he was trying to get combustion from it, I'm not sure. Lol, dad joke. But he gets taken out, so we CR him. And then the rest of the key went pretty smoothly, so there's not too much else to note here. And then we complete this Older Man 23 with about a minute left on the timer. So we get 9 score for this, and now we're sat at 3,112 Mythic Plus score. Gearing up for a 25 Vortex Pinnacle then on a Fortified Week, we are now on the reset again. We had a massive Monk Tank sign up for this one. I think he was around 3.3 or 3.4. On this first pull, the healer dies to a Wind Bolt. Not much I could do here. I literally had everything on cooldown, even my Freezing Trap. Maybe just unlucky timing or maybe somebody else in the group could have kicked it. That's not really on the healer there. On the first boss, the priest actually dies to the cyclone that retracts when the boss phases. I guess all you can really learn from this is don't stand directly in front of them just before the phase. Then we actually mind soothe and skip the first young storm dragon. Big old scary mob, so you want to skip that if you can. Big props to the healer here. I have no idea how we end up living this pool. We did four assassins as well as the ramp pool. I think we were going a bit overkill with trying to time this key. Maybe if we just held W through it and did a standard route, we could have ended up timing it. Because spoiler, we don't end up timing it. But yeah, I hate this pool. We're trapped in a corner. We have basically no field of view. I've got my CC on cooldown, so I'm just praying that the rest of the group can coordinate their CC. And I honestly think that Diagnose was absolutely carrying us with the healing here. There was so much outgoing damage, I have no idea how we lived it. Kind of wish for the first time in my life I had a healing meter on for that one. Then we move on to Alteris. And I promise you that I actually got a FaceTime call here. So my concentration slipped for like 0.2 seconds. And then I end up eating the downburst and also just dying to like the tornado at the same time. It was just really unfortunate timing. I sound like I'm making the worst excuse I know, but please believe me, please. So we blame the girlfriend for those ones. Hopefully she doesn't see this. Then in these high keys, you probably are going to want to take notes here. If you can skip with something like a mind tube, then you should definitely do it here and take out the pack at the back first. This then allows you to stand in the lightning field for the pack just before so that you take much less damage. It's more of a fortified thing, though it definitely does help on Tyrannical as well. After this, I didn't even realize you could do this, but we were going to take some of the Skyfall stars out and then just leave the rest of them up. And at a certain range, they just stop doing damage to you and probably drop combat for you. I'm not actually 100% sure on that one. But at this key level on a fortified week, they just do so much damage. So we do end up wiping here. We did end up clearing enough percent though before we ended up dying. So we move on to the last boss here. We probably weren't going to time it anyway. I think we're a little bit rushed for time. But saying that actually, now that I think about it, it was a fortified week and the boss is already 25% done. So maybe there was hope, but unfortunately the healer does die to static cling here. And then I get taken out by a chain lightning. I definitely should have turtled here, but I thought Fortitude of the Bear was going to be enough. And I probably would have ended up dying at some point anyway so then we ended up wiping and that is the key gg after that i don't normally like running keys back to back if i've just depleted the first one but we did that anyway here i wasn't too fueled with confidence because we did end up having a few deaths to the turbulence from the cloud prince but aside from that and a few city deaths during the second half of the key we ended up timing this key with about five minutes to go which actually blows my mind because the difference in this 24 compared to the 25 that we just did is actually bonkers like we literally did no fancy routing in this pool. We literally just went from pack to pack and pulled and we finished it with five minutes to go. So I think that proves that in the previous key, we were just doing too much. Obviously, it is a key level higher, so it's definitely going to be harder. But if you're finishing a 24 with five minutes to go, then I think that says a lot. So we get some big score out of that 24 Vortex Pinnacle. We get 23 score, which is actually wild at this level of score. So now we're sat at 3,135 and that's where we're going to leave it for this episode. If you guys did enjoy this episode, then leave a like down below and also subscribe to your boy. We're going to continue this journey onto 3.2 and around that time, I imagine pugs will start to cap out. So we'll see where we go from there. Maybe we'll do a different spec or something like that. Let me know if you have any suggestions and until next time, I'll catch you guys later.